welcome everybody um, to, let me just get the right slide up, to the live questions and answers session for the uh, tech fairs on the topic of tools and activities for synchronous virtual instruction. Uh, this morning we have a panel of our presenters whose presentations are up on our grid, uh, Electronic Village Grid and Flipgrid. And um, well, this session is going to run for an hour. Um, we see it as more of a loosely uh, question, loose, loosely organized questions and answers sessions. Um, I have a few questions. Uh, feel free to ask uh, questions to our panelists and to each other. And um, I don't want to talk the whole session, of course, because I want to give our presenters a chance to talk and answer questions. So uh, I'm going to start uh, sh stop sharing so that we can see our uh, faces a little bit better and uh, let you take it away with questions. Any questions to start with? I had a question of Rana. Um, I enjoyed your uh, your short uh, presentation, as it were, this morning, and I I didn't know that OneNote uh, could do all those things. Yeah, I don't know if you showed whether I, I didn't know it had all those organizational capabilities, but I assume it also has the sort of uh, shared document function yeah. of Google Docs where people can write on the same document and you can comment and, and exactly. all that. Yeah. Yeah, actually it is there, uh, Eric, but the thing is uh, because the time was so short of 10 minutes that I couldn't yeah. possibly show everything. I mean, one note, I can go on for one hour almost, you know, it is so sure. comprehensive. Okay. And uh, you're, you're right uh, when you say that we can share the documents exactly the same way. And the good thing is it just works as a live document. So if the student is writing something, I can actually see it. So I use it very effectively. Um, when I give them some kind of classwork or homework, for example, for example, I'm checking the writing. So I open a student's writing and I show them and the whole class can watch actually when I'm making corrections in the work. So the whole class can see, okay, this, this needs to be corrected. This needs to be, so uh, it's really useful in, in every possible sense. Uh, I can keep, I can monitor their progress. And the good thing is, uh, I don't know, I don't remember whether I pointed that in my video, you can do uh, a lot of cross book uh, distribution. So if, for example, I taught one class and then I move on to the next semester. I want to pull some material from another class to this class. It's just one click and the whole class gets it. Whether it's a class of four or it's a class of 50, you know, you don't have to se send them separately. It's so organized. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Rana, I have a follow-up question to you. Um, mm -hmm. Does OneNote come for free? Yes, it does come for free. And uh, it's a part of Microsoft Office package. Uh, so if you have a Windows 10 installed in your computer, it, it definitely comes with free. If you have Office 365 package, it comes free. Uh, so, and there is no limit to how many pages and sections you can add and add in each notebook and how many notebooks you can create. So of course, because everything gets, uh, by the way, it also gets synced with your OneDrive. Uh, so uh, the only limitation could be uh, your, uh, your storage in your OneDrive, which is normally 10 GB, you know, roughly, which comes free uh, with your package. So, and the good thing is it can be integrated into your Microsoft Teams. So if you're working on Microsoft Teams, you can open a class within Teams, uh, class notebook. So it's all integrated. So it's a whole package. You can do wonders with it. Mm -hmm. But you can you work on it offline though? Sorry? 
Can you work on it offline? Yes, we can work on offline. So for example, uh, if I'm not online and I, whatever changes I'm making, by the time I'm again back on the net, it will get automatically synced. Uh, the only uh, technical glitch sometimes what happens is that sometimes the, the syncing takes a little bit time. So you need to refresh uh, the sync button. Uh, I can show it. Uh, can I show, uh, can I have uh, a simple, yes. so I will you be should able, be able to, to, to share. Because this is the only problem that I've faced that sometimes, you know, it takes a little while, you need to refresh it, the syncing thing. It's disabled, Amata. Just a second. Rana, I just made you co-host. You should be able to share now. Okay, thank you, dear. So, for example, um, just yes. Yeah. If you can see this small thing in the corner, this needs to be synced often. So uh, sometimes, uh, for example, the student has written something, it won't uh, show up. I need to refresh and sometimes I need to sync this, but that's not a big deal. Uh, it really uh, works normally. Whatever the student has done, it shows up simultaneously. So it's not a big deal. The, what I wanted to show you was this thing that I can do so many things. I can distribute page to, in, to the whole class individually to certain students if they joined late maybe. A group distribution is there, cross notebook distribution is there so I can shift material from other classes in a, just a click. I can review student work quickly, you know, uh, in any notebook and add remove students. Everything is possible from within the notebook. So there are lots of wonderful features uh, and it really makes your life easier. So I would just say, please go and try it. Once you use it, you will fall in love with this amazing application. I have fallen in love. I can't do without it now. Even when we go back to physical classes, I'm not going to stop using it. It's really very organized. It sounds great. Thank you so much, Rana. And it, there's no difference whether you do it on a PC or a Mac, right? Uh, no, no, it's the same. All right. Are there any questions, any other questions? Not necessarily to Rana. I have a I have a question. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. My microphone's not done. Um, so I haven't been to the electronic village very often because I've been in other sessions and I see several presenters here. Is there any way that the presenters can just tell what the what they're present, you know, they're, what they're here for? Then I might have some more questions. You know what, I'm trying to uh, maybe share a list so we of wrote presenters. Marta, oh, Marta, most of us wrote the word presenter on our names. So I think that they can see that. And that's what we actually did earlier this morning. And I think that that was helpful. And that's I do know that insane. Judith Judith got cut off. So maybe she'd like to go first today because I know that she was last this in this morning session. <laughs> That sounds excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Um, I I have two two presentations on um, 
on the flip grid. Um, one is um, about 10, uh, 10 tech tools that I've been using through, through the COVID. Um, and then the second one is just about Padlet. So um, I can, um, can I share my screen, Marta? You can read now. Okay. Um, one second. Um, sorry. So if I just go through the first one, because that um, in, incorporates um, Padlet, I'll just quickly go through. Um, the 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 biggest tech tool that um that I found to be very very helpful um, for all of these are that they are free or they have a freemium account which is really really nice um, and they're very basically very easy once you get your feet wet with them they're very easy to use and they're easy for the students and many of them or probably all of them I will continue to use when I go back to face to face um, and they're really nice because they can be used synchronously asynchronously or in, in the face to face classroom. Um, uh, so the on the flip grid flip grid video, I go through Mentimeter. Mentimeter and Pear Deck have similar capabilities that you link to. A, you give students a code, and the students can either tap or they can um, type in the code, and they're interactive. So you pose a question or you give an activity, and the students will answer right on their screen. Um, Mentimeter is more like a polling tool, so it's anonymous. Where Pear Deck and Nearpod um, have the student's name attached, so you can really monitor their learning. Um, and it's very, very helpful for formative assessment. Um, Edpuzzle and H5P are uh, great for um, introducing topics with videos because um, you can use the library or you can very easily create your own, get a video, and then put in questions. Um, so um, it's very, very nice for, um, for getting information. These are just some examples of Pear Deck of how I would use it in my classroom. Um, and you can see here, for example, this is a chronological order slide and you have the numbers at the bottom and the student will just literally click and drag the numbers. Um, and then you can see that they are learning. You can add, um, you know, for editing, if you're working on whatever uh, verb tense, punctuation, like I have here. Um, and then they have these also these really, really great slides that really help you monitor how your students are doing. Um, my number four is WordWall. Um, this is amazing, amazing, amazing. And this is like in a pinch, you're like, oh, I need something to get them going. Um, they, they have a most amazing library and it has some really, really fun, um, you know, you can have like a jungle theme. You can have, for example, the two, the, the, the two screens that I have here. Um, and this is really, it gives you like, like about 10, usually about 10 to 20 like items, and then it recycles them. So it's really great for vocabulary, the things like irregular verbs, matching things together. Um, so it's very, very good. My students um, love WordWall and I love WordWall. Kahoot, I think Kahoot is fairly well known um, by now these days. Again, Kahoot, like WordWall, has a fabulous library, so you can, but it also, I like to make my own um, things too on Kahoot. Um, and uh, it, it is fun. It is a little problematic on uh, remote because it's best to have a second device um, and strong internet because of that. Um, Jeopardy Labs. Jeopardy is always a fun game to play. Um, great for review. Um, so the, again, Jeopardy Labs is a huge library. So you don't necessarily need to create your own, but it's not too hard to, to do. Um, Bamboozle, another another um, fabulous um, tool that I found um, this past year, um, and again it has a humongous library. Um, and I I don't really create anything on this; I just use everybody else's. So just like looking at something for um, pronunciation, you know, for the for the past tense, regular past tense, you can find things like that. Um, and they have, I break my students into two teams. I have my students, um, team one, team two, and they take turns. And so they, everybody takes turns answering questions. But then the fun thing of it is you get these ones that take 25 points or swap points and the students go, ah, 
yeah, they get, it just really brings some fun energy into the classroom. Um, Socrative, I'm not going to talk too much about Socrative because I know Rana, um, she, she um, talked about this a, a bit and, um, but uh, it, this is a um, assessment tool and it has some really cool features. Um, the thing I do wanna show you here with, with Socrative is the really nice, like number five you can see everyone bought that was a bomber so that shows me either i didn't teach it or the question was really really badly worded um padlet um is an amazing tool i can't talk enough about padlet um it just has so many capabilities for so many different aspects of um the online classroom um and i would invite you to to look on um i'll I'll clip up my Padlet that I have um, on the chat box um, after I'm done. Um, and then yeah, everybody knows Flipgrid now because everybody posted, at least the presenters posted, but Padlet is just really fun video series. Um, very, very user-friendly um, to post videos and then they can have fun with it. They can make stickers and frames and, um, uh, and then they can leave comments, which is very, very nice. So there, that builds that interaction, especially if you're doing more asynchronous work. And there is also the capability if you want to do a rubric, so if you're grading your students. So those are my 10. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. I actually um, was told about Mentimeter last spring during the transition, and uh, I've, I've really loved it. Um, I actually brought uh, brought one of my polls up on the screen. Um, if if you want me to show, it's a great icebreaker at the beginning. I, I could show my screen real quick, but you can do word clouds. You can do um, ratings of different questions. There are like five different formats for the polls, and you get two questions for free, and there are different color themes and and so on. So. Uh, and it's very easy to use. So uh, I, I, I endorse that one too. And you can also make Mentimeter your presentation. So um, you can have the interactive questions. You can also have quiz. There's quiz aspects and you can have a leaderboard mm -hmm. and you can just put your regular like slide information that you would like um, on Google Slides or PowerPoint. So it has both of those um, capabilities all in one. But you only get, you only get two slides for free right you have to pay no those are just like the yes those are the um the ones that you were referring to like the cloud um the interactive but just the regular slides you can do as many as you like for free did not know that <laughs> thank you sure can i add something mm -hmm. okay well, the only problem in Mentimeter is that the code is only for two days, like the, when this is free, all right? This is the only problem that you have. Maybe you are going to use other application like Good Club, for example, or other one. Um, the code is when you, like, if I were to set it up today and I wanted to, to use it for tomorrow, you know, you can renew the code. The code is, and like I can reshow, and it saves. It saves presentations that I've done, so I could get a presentation that I did six months ago, and then I could share it right now. You just have to regenerate the code, and it's no, it's no financial burden. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thank you so much, Judith. I really enjoyed your presentations and I learned even more from, from them. Um, all right, we had a question in the chat about what is Pecha Kucha, if I'm saying it right. So I would think that would be a nice transition to next, next presenter, uh, Baiba. Would you, would you like to uh, do a little snapshot of, of your presentation? Absolutely. Thank you, Marta. So I presented on Pecha Kucha on Flipgrid, and I will say that I didn't go into some of the nuts and bolts of what it is because it just felt like everything that you look online tells you what it is. And that is that Pecha Kucha is a presentation style that utilizes only 12 visuals and 20 seconds of speech per visual. Um, and so is that my, my background? I'm sorry, that's a very strange noise. Oh, okay. Um, so 
on my presentation, I actually show several um, snippets of students. I do it in Pecha Kucha style so that you can get a feel for what it is. I talk you through how to introduce it, how to get students to start thinking about it, storyboarding and practicing, and then how they can present it. And I show you how to use a PowerPoint feature to actually turn it into a Pecha Kucha style live um, classroom presentation. However, you can also record them, which is the ones that I shared. What I love about Pecha Kucha is that it pushes students to be concise. They have to be concise with their language. They also have to learn that as they are having visuals, often people have a PowerPoint and they talk about one thing on a PowerPoint and then they go to the next PowerPoint and they talk about that. So maybe one slide is 30 seconds, the other slide is three minutes. Pecha Kucha is 20 seconds per visual. That allows students to be thinking about let's say discourse markers and transitions in their language as they're talking because the visual is complementing their speech. There's nothing for them to read so they have to practice and rehearse. And it promotes active listening because their classmates have to listen to them. Um, it's been known to be, have been used from students as young as six to adults. So um, I have found that it has made presentations less stressful more engaging, more, more interesting. The students have found that, that, they're, that they're fun, but it's, you can not only just do di digital stories, which I've done, I've actually used them for students to now present formally on their research projects. So I highly recommend, if you have a chance to look at the Flipgrid or just Google Pecha Kucha. On my Flipgrid, I have some links to articles that I read and then it could get you, a, um, get you interested as well. So, I don't wanna take up too much time because we're already at almost the 30 marker. I would love to answer some questions if anybody's interested in Pecha Kucha. I have a quick question, Baiba. Sure. Um, so you mentioned that it, it could be, it, it's really adaptive to uh, different ages. How about different levels of, uh, of uh, English language skills? Um, yes, I think that it would be adapted to any level because uh, a, a small child who perhaps is in elementary school could take, you could first of all modify it for let's say 10 slides. You don't ever modify the timing, it's 20 seconds per visual, but you could have a student have 10 visuals and describe and discuss for maybe a story, um, my first day at school, or I mean, you can, they can, you can do anything. So absolutely, it could be any level. And what I loved about the Pecha Kucha website is that I found videos of young students who are teenagers that were giving full presentations and these were teenagers around the world and they then inspired my students to say, hey, that 16 year old, that 15 year old, they can do it. Um, and they're, they're from the Ukraine or they're from you know, Mongolia, I can do it. So it really empowers them to see that you know, non-native speakers are, are, can also be giving these presentations. And then I did mention um, in early, today's earlier, um, uh, Q and A. As much as it's perfect for tech, for recording, and also for the live, where you turn on the settings so that students can't stop, they can't pause, and they just have to keep going. But you can do it low tech without any internet at all, and there are modifications. So if you know you lose electricity or you don't have Wi-Fi in your school, you could still use the techniques of Pecha Kucha and get the benefits. Sounds excellent. Thank you so much, Baiba. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Baiba? No. Well, if you do, you can always hop back to Flipgrid and chat with Baiba in there. Um, well, there was another question this time to Lane, um, if she could maybe um, explain Sofla to us. Lane, would you, <laughs> would you be willing to share with us a little bit more? And you're gonna to have to unmute yourself. Okay, all right. Um, it was really hard. It took me a long, long time to condense to that Flipgrid requirement and get it under 500 meg and that because I use Prezi video. So, um, so basically, if you've never, you know, seen this before. Um, 
Sofla is uh, is an eight eight step cycle. And it's for uh, the reason I'm in this group. This is all for people who are doing synchronous. And in Sofla, there are eight steps. Seven of them are synchronous. One of them is not. So I figured this would be the best place for me to show it. So this is Sofla. You can see the pre-work. If you know what flipped learning is, the pre-work happens outside of class. That's when you teach the lesson and you embed questions and such. And then when they come to class, they start the rest of the cycle and they go around to these steps. So in the flip grid, what I do is I go very quickly through all the steps. And there's a longer presentation too, but I did a quick one for flip grid. There are the steps. And then I just went like that for each step. So the pre-work, this is what they do out of class. You have to embed questions. You collect the data. They come in. They do a sign-in activity. And that's something reflecting whether they did the uh, pre-work or not. It's much more complicated, but I'm just doing you the real, the lightning round. Then there's a whole group application. You have to be careful there that you're not teaching it again. You're just clarifying misconceptions, going more deeply into the subject matter. And everyone has to participate in that. Very often it's a collaborative uh, graphic organizer. Then they're ready to go into their breakouts. This is pretty similar to if you have in class teaching and you put them in groups and you can do whatever kind of groups you want. So that's not really um, unique to this particular um, model. It's just you do breakouts, but you have to build in accountability. That's important because the next step is share out. And when they share, they come back out of their breakouts and they might not all share, but some of them will share and they know that somebody's gonna share. So again, there's a lot more to each step. One of the things I build into step five here is shack, which is peer feedback is structured. So the peer feedback is they either share, help, ask, or comment to the group that's sharing. So they're active, they're not just sitting there. And if they put great job, I say, no, 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 no. That's not, you need to be more share, help, ask, comment. Then the, the lesson's basically over. The next step is to prepare them for the next pre-work. This is solving the problem of flipped learning, which is nobody does the pre-work. If you use SOFLA, they'll do the pre-work. Maybe not 100%, but they catch on that they have to do it. So what you do is you preview the pre-work. You go in like a movie trailer and you get them excited. Oh, I want to see that movie. Oh, I want to see do that pre-work. You also pre-teach a couple of vocabulary items ahead of time that they're going to encounter new words, but very little, just a taste to get them excited and to get them connected cognitively, affective and cognitive. All right, then you give them the assignment, which is pretty straightforward, but you have to give it three ways. You give it one way, which is in your synchronous session, orally and in a written form. The second way you do it is in your LMS, wherever you put assignments. And the third is I always do an announcement. I shoot it out there to them. In fact, I also do a reminder before class to say, did you do it? <laughs> so that's the assignment. And the last thing is reflect. Just like I said, there was a sign in activity. They have to put their name. They put their name on the reflection. The reflection is what sticks with them from today's lesson. And they know they can't leave until they do that. And they better pay attention or they won't be able to put anything in. And again, if they just say great class or this, I learned a lot, I erase it. They can't do that. They have to say something substantive. Okay, those are the steps of SOFLA. And if you liked Prezi video, that's a whole nother conversation. Okay, thank you. I simply, you so simply, much, loved, it, simply loved it, uh, uh, Lane. Amazing. Any questions? All right, well then, if there are no questions, let's move on to, um, to another presenter. I'm just, I'm just gonna choose the next person on my waffle, okay? And that will be Olenka. Sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but <laughs> could you give us a synopsis of your presentation, Olenka? Okay. Well, first of all, thank you very much, okay, for the invitation and also for participating in this EVO. It's really the first time, okay, that I am going to do like that. And I enjoyed that it's possible if you have any questions, could you please contact me? My presentation, give me a second, what is it? 
Yes, it's about gamify your online classes with Genially, all right? I use this kind of presentation because it's very useful, helpful, and the students love it. They are going to create different presentation and something that my students love, for example, is when they are going to use choice word. They have different choice word to mention, okay, that you are going to see. This is about what is gamification over there. And also it's very simple. You are going to include different uh, pictures over there. And they are some books, okay, if you are interested in that you are going to see in more details in my in the video, okay? Uh, there are five different steps and everything is free, okay? This is the free version. Obviously, if you want to buy the other, it is possible and you have more in place, but this is simple. Design, collaborate, personalize, share, and analyze, okay? And these are some characteristics that we are going to have. Something that a student love, some of my students love, is to have a choice for it, okay? So they are going to do different things. And the most important genially is that it's only in one slide. So you are going to have the link to enter to every single part, okay? In this section, we're going to do different things like I told you before. And for example, some of the my student love is about Brit quiz that is here, over there, okay? When they are going to put some questions like this, like gamification. All right, another one that they love, it's for example, escape rooms. They, they enjoy a lot the escape rooms over there. And you have a template here, oops. You have a template over there. And this is easy to create. You are going to put audio of this, all right? And you are going to, are going to start. There are different clues here if you want so that the student have the possibility to choose, okay, any character, for example, about Harry Potter. They are going to have, and you are going to practice as well, mathematical everything that you want. For example, if you are going to search the code, if you search 10, okay, minus eight, plus one, what is it, plus one is three. Okay, so you are going to adapt about this. And the idea is that they are going to find the code. For example, two times eight, Two times eight, uh, 16 minus, or whatever, whatever. Yes, minus two, it's, I'm sorry, two times five, <laughs> minus two, <laughs> and so on, yeah, all right? And here you're going to do like this. So you have different possibilities to do this. Five plus 10, 15 minus eight, what, I see here. Oh, I confused it. Five minus oh my five plus ten. I, oh my goodness, five plus fifteen minus eight. Uh, fifteen minus eight. Uh, okay. Well, the idea is that you are going to have the code and you are going to have the correct one, or you are going to choose. So when the student try to confuse, they are going to put that is going to be back. Okay, where you will find the third clue and so on. So the student enjoyed about this kind of uh, expectation, this kind of clues that you have. Also, you are going to have uh, something you are going to do. It's like this, all right, an infography. What is important that you are going to do genially because, for example, this is a project and you are going to make groups, the breakout room, and they are going to create everything. And you are going to include directly here some tests for them to do it, okay? And then they are going to talk about this. For example, this is about 10 things you shouldn't do when you travel abroad, all right? So we have different kind of presentation. This is the first day that they know uh, me and they are going to, I only put pictures and this is the first one and also the students, okay, try to present, try to introduce themselves and try to introduce their partners, their partners as well. Okay, so uh, you are going to do everything with this session. Okay, you have different possibilities. The most important is that a student tried, and I encourage you because this is free. Okay, we are going to link about the video on YouTube. You are going to put also your Spotify and so on. So there's different possibilities to move in only one slide. Change. Okay, in only one, only one slide, you have all, all about that. Okay. You have discography, and this is about the Spotify that we are going to do it, and so on. 
okay? Biography, ten facts, so they are going to use with singer over there. And this is my presentation. I encourage you, if you have any question, you are going to find me in Olivia in my social network. This is my nickname, Olenka Villavicencio ELT. For example, in this wallet, I have different boards and they are free for everybody. The students also enjoy and you can collaborate with others. So you are going to find all the information here, all right, on the wallet and you are going to put everything over there. You know, this is my wallet, for example, and you are going to put everything there. You are going to have home, and here you have uh, different kind of presentation. So this is important because when I consider something that is new for me, so the next time I enter and also my student have the possibility to share. You, this group, for example, is private one. So you are going to move the collection and it's possible public or private, or you are going to collaborate as well. So this is uh, my little presentation and you are going to, I am going to put also the presentation here on the chat box. And if you have any question, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ivanka. There was a question in the chat about if uh, Genially would be good for adult education. For adult education, yes. I use for all the levels of education because uh, my student enjoy that. And also this is a new way. This is a lot of visual and they are going to do very creative. I also use with my business English student, and I play them. You have to adapt according to the level of your student. This is here. You're going to use that with, with the student. Thank you, Marita. Excellent. Thank you, Olenka. Uh, are there any other questions to Olenka for now? No, yes. no. I, I am sorry. I am going to answer Marita. Is it too complicated? No, it's free, okay? It's free and it's very simple to use. The only thing that you have to do when you enter is, you are going to enter to this. This is free, uh, this is my, this is a free account. Obviously, if you, have, if you want more templates, you have to pay, but this is free, okay? So when you enter, you have the possibility to create, only you are going to put here, create, and you have, listen to me, different things gamification, you have images, you are going to have videos, infographies, and so on. And, well, the free version, everything is ready here. But if you buy it, the paid version, it's possible that you are going to create files over there. So this is the presentation that I have, and I enjoy using Genially because in only one slide, it is possible to have everything that you want. Thank you. Anything else? How much is the premium version? I don't know. <laughs> this is Genially. You are going to buy here. This is here. And you are going to pull about this. This is about the premium version. We are going to do here. Here are all uh, something that you need to pay. It, okay. For educators are less than for others. So these are, these are here over there. Now so you're a student and so on. But my version is free. So it's, it's, it's up to you. Okay. Thank so you. all of that you just shared with us, you did it with your free version? Free, yes. Completely okay. free. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Olenka. Um, for the next presenter, if I could please ask, ask uh, Lucia if you could share a little synopsis of your presentation. Sure, of course. How are you today? Good? So um, my presentation was on using Google Slides and the focus was made on graphic design. And one of the things that uh, I think that teachers should ask ourselves is that why is that we should care about this? And I just wanted to take you through some samples that I have created for you to see the reason why I think that you should be able to, to use, sorry. Can you see my screen? Yes, okay. 
Yes. So, oh, for example, some of the things that I mentioned in my presentation refer a, li a little bit to uh, concepts that are related to graphic design. And of course, we are not graphic designers, but my intention was to transmit teachers that we don't need to be graphic designers in order to create professional looking designs. So, for example, these are some real samples that teachers have made where the place where I work. And I have kindly asked for them permission to use and show these slides to you. And for example, this is a slide that a teacher used. And of course, it looks great. I mean, it's organized. We can it's... only see your Flipgrid um, page. Uh, I'm can't... sorry. No problem. Let me go again. Sorry. For some reason, ah, because I was sharing something else, my bad. No, yes. Okay, I'm sorry about that. So as I was telling you, this is a slide that I um, that I took from one of the teachers where I work. And uh, as we can see, I mean, the slide looks nice. It's organized. It, it, it's appropriate, right? But my intention was to transmit that there are some little changes that we can do in order to make our designs look better. No news to teachers. Images aid comprehension. And the same thing happens with colors and with fonts. So the idea was that these slides that teachers use can transmit something to students so that they can enjoy and make the most of the classes. So as you can see, I have combined the use of colors. There's a little bit of, of funkier when it comes to using different fonts. Of course, uh, the, the drawing over here that can trigger something when it comes to discussing topics. For example, this is another one that I thought was quite messy because the teachers have uh, I mean, there's a lot of text and the frame over there, it's a little bit disturbing because the text is like halfway between there. So I suggest for something that looks more like this, that it's a little bit more organized when it comes to fonts, to pictures, to colors. This is another sample. For me, the way I see this, this slide, it's, it's boring. It's not a slide that triggers a lot of discussion or that I can somehow have a positive impact on students. So I would suggest to go something more like this, even though there are no pictures still, I think that it's easier for students to read. The dark background can be distracting. This is another one with another example in which, for example, you have the blue background that can be a strange when it comes to the combination with blue and orange. I don't know if you're familiar, but there are op colors that are opposite and this happens with blue and with orange. For me, this doesn't look very appealing. So I would go for something more like this. I find it a bit more relaxing somehow. And for example, this other slide that has nothing. And if you're talking about introducing yourself, probably you want students to be more energetic about the topic. So maybe I would suggest to go something for more like this at Italy, a little bit more inviting. So uh, bottom line, I just wanted to, to share with, with you, with teachers, something that can help make your designs look better, to have your slides look more professional and that you don't need to be a professional to create professional looking designs. Just by considering some things when it comes to colors, when it comes to distribution of elements on the page, when it comes to fonts that you use and the colors that you use uh, those fonts in, I think that that can help a lot with learning and that students can, I mean, me, I, I'm, I'm also a student at times. So for me, I find it super appealing when I see a design that is attractive, it makes me wanna learn more somehow. So that's what I would hope that you would uh, take from the session, something that you can apply in your classes. What I can do is I can share with you the resources that I prepare and I have them all put together here because I, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Google Slides. There are some templates from Slides Carnival, also Canva. Maybe you're familiar with it. It's not for Google Slides, but I think that it's still a great, um, a great place for you to get some of these ideas and that it's best to imitate. I wouldn't expect teachers to create anything, but that you imitate. I don't know if you want to ask anything. 
sorry. Now I send the link to everybody. Are there any questions? Um, we have a question from Lane. <laughs> Yes, Lane, I mean, uh, I encourage you to watch my presentation because I don't want to bore you again with everything. Uh, no, I, I would love to be your graphic designer, <laughs> but uh, just trust me, if you watch my presentation, you will find that there are some, think some simple things, sorry, that you can do to make your slides look better. Trust me, I mean, you prepare an awesome presentation, so please, I'm sure you will be able to do something awesome. It's just about uh, caring about some little details, and, and I promise you that it, that it's not that hard. Thank you, you so much, Lucia. Of course. I'm sorry, are there any other questions? All right, so. If there are no other questions, maybe you can save them for later. Uh, let's move on to the next presenter and on my list, that is Eric. Eric, would you like to share your presentation with us? Sure, hi everyone. Uh, so if you haven't watched my presentation, what I did uh, was, so I teach, I teach expository writing or first year writing to bilinguals and uh, mostly freshmen. And they were scattered all over the world in the fall for their first semester in college. And they were not here in um, Cambridge at MIT. And I felt bad for them. We also normally do team debates as they learn to do library research so they can do group research gearing up for their research paper. Obviously that's very difficult to do on something like Zoom. Um, third, I had been a tour guide. I have a history degree. I'd been a tour guide around Boston a couple of years ago. So what I did was I, I gave them the opportunity to give short presentations on historical sites in Boston uh, remotely and help them feel connected. So I'll just show you uh, from my presentation a brief clip some brief clips from one what one student did uh it's i jump around because the whole presentation is like 10 minutes but it gives you an idea of the kinds of things that they did present an old kind of bookstore which is often referred as the battle of the 19th century's american literature. this is a map it takes around nine minutes to drive from MIT to Old Corner Bookstore. It was Anne Hutchinson's house, and the house was destroyed in West Boston Fire in 1711. Shortly after that, Thomas Chris built this building. Quickly, just meeting at her house for both men and women. Um, after and Hutchinson was banished from Massachusetts. Thomas Chris purchased the home. It's an anti slavery novel and it helped lay the groundwork for the Civil War. Um, there are two main plots. All right, so you get the idea. Oops. Show. Uh, they also included. Uh, 3D or 360 degree photos. Uh, I had been doing some work with 3D cameras. Uh, initially, I started giving them each a photo for each site, but then discovered that Google Street View, as you probably know, has incredible number of 360 degree photos. And then someone else here this morning and, and a colleague here at MIT just showed us, uh, well, there's VR Google where, and, and Google tour where students can create their own virtual tour. So um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good experience. Um, I, I've uh, created a folder uh, that is uh, referenced in the, the, the URL, short URL is referenced in my presentation and I put in uh, a few full presentations. Now, the thing with Lynn, you know, she had a lot of uh, pronunciation issues. 
usually, you know, when students come here, they're immersed in English and their pronunciation improves rapidly. Uh, in these days when they're home, you know, they, they're listening a lot and then they're offline talking in their native languages. So uh, some, you know, tips about working with them on making sure the keywords are intelligible, if not all the words. And, you know, probably things that most of you have figured out anyway of how students need to share video without making their audience nauseous by jerking it around and things like that. Uh, so anyway, and I put uh, the assignment sheet and the kinds of information I gave them to choose a site. I gave them all a list and they all ranked their choices and and so on. Uh, so all that's in that folder uh, referenced. I don't have the URL handy here, but it's all in the presentation and to, you're free to use any of those documents. But they Thank said- much, Eric. They said it really helped them feel connected, you know, to the, to the campus. And they probably know more now than most Boston residents, let alone, you know, in-person students. So when they get here, you know, they can, go out to Lexington and Concord or, or the old corner bookstore, things like that. Sounds excellent, Eric. Eric. Are there any questions yeah. to Eric? Judith, okay. Hi, Eric, um, I thank you for showing the video. It really brings it to life from what you had discussed this morning. Um, could you, uh, what was the time frame that the students had um, to do the research and then to create their video? Uh, so, one is they did these in they did these live in class, so they they were not. I debated whether to do that, but I think they they need practice presenting live. So you know that was an extra challenge because things happen when you're doing this live, as we all know. Uh, but you know uh, we needed to start them right away because of the schedule. So uh, some students had a week, some had you know, months. Um, and I graded, I told people I would grade the earlier ones a little lighter to encourage them to sign up. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a learning process for all of us. So, uh, but generally it was a 10 minute presentation. Although I was very forgiving because, you know, I'd never taught this class online. There were 15 students. It was just drinking from a fire hydrant, you know, for everyone, I think. So, we have another question from a chat room. Um, were these student videos connected to an essay assignment? You know, they weren't. And originally, that's a great question. Originally, I wanted to offer them the opportunities to turn this into their research paper somehow. But just in the crush of the semester, uh, I just, I was just overwhelmed and I just couldn't get to that so i just sort of reverted to our old essay topic generation but uh, i had done some brainstorming like you know uh the the problem is you know there's so much research done about all these things already and not all the sites have any sort of controversy around them of course some do but so i think it would take more thought about the specific sites in your area to to predict you know pitfalls that you want to avoid when students pick a uh, an essay topic or or give them a predefined list of topics that you've thought it through thank you very much eric we are running a little bit short of time so i'm gonna uh, jump over to our uh, final presenter who's with us here today which is uh, katya katya if you could tell us uh, about your presentation a little bit yeah i'll try to be brief and i have my um oh i cannot share if you marta could help me that. Oh, let me see i thought i made you a I can't find you now. I got it. Okay. There you go. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, it works now. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, so my presentation was kind of similar to what some of the presenters were already talking about bringing more excitement uh, and engagement through games. Uh, so um, I talked about Brightful.me. It's a set of online games and all of these are free. I think that's important. And then we have Immigration Nation and Third World Farmer. And I'm mostly familiar uh, with the first two. And here I have more information. So brightful.me, uh, those are conversation games and I use them uh, usually as icebreakers at the beginning of the class. Uh, so one of the game is, for example, a taboo game, right? We know how to play it in person, but now they have the online version or another is uh, spot my lie. So a student or me will tell uh, three things about themselves, right? They, that's typing online. And then you have to guess, right? Which one is true and which one is a lie. So usually my students really enjoy those and those are non-competitive right so they're just more for knowing each other and um yeah and conversation practice i would recommend for higher level of english proficient proficiency students because of um just the vocabulary that, that is there and you have the link here um also i have uh immigration nation that one is more like um a game for, I would say, different kind of, um, maybe more for students who are refugees or immigrants who are in this process of like, they want to become an immigrant. And here they teach vocabulary related to immigration and also they kind of guide them through the process, like how you become a citizen, right? From uh, an immigrant to, to a citizen. And the last game here is a third world farmer. It's a strategy game. And um, here you have to make a decisions. Imagine you are a farmer in a, like a developing country. So what kind of decisions can you make to be successful, right? Um, as a farmer, like how much cattle you buy um, and all those questions. And then uh, in my la and when you see my presentation, if you're interested, I kind of open each game and show what it looks like. And then also in my last slide here, I have a few resources. Um, I found them helpful to know more about the options for digital games. I guess that that's it for me. Are there any questions for Katya? Was that appropriate wait time? So it's an online, online game, is that right? Yeah, all three of them are online games, all three, uh, but they're all a little different. So Brightful.me is more like a conversation game. So for example, a student see a question and then they have a discussion, but online, so at some point they have to type answers. There is a timing set there, so they, they have to do fast. For example, uh, the second game is more like a puzzle, Immigration Nation. So for example, they ask you, can this person immigrate with this kind of uh, background, right? And they have to answer. So it's more like a puzzle game, um, maybe like a board game, you know, where you have to get the correct answer to move forward. And the last game is a strategy game. They're also called, I think, simulation games. So you have to imagine you are in that situation and then make the decisions. And I think all of them you can play together in a class. Um, so that's an, um, an option. So they can be a little bit collaborative too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or for example, in the last game, the third world farmer, like one person can play, for example, a teacher, right? And but you can make decisions together, right? Sounds excellent. I can't wait to try it all. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. This is just such a trove of knowledge. And um, I really enjoyed all of your presentations. I'm going to go back and rewatch everything anyways. Um, I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing your expertise and experience with us. Um, I will, let me do this first. I will, and do this, sorry. There we go. Uh, the, the, this recording will be posted on uh, our CoIS uh, YouTube channel. Uh, the Flipgrid presentations will stay up there forever uh, for everybody to enjoy. 
Uh, I've posted in the chat in the chat. If you look back, I've posted every link to everybody's presentation plus uh, to the topic. You can also uh, get to them through our website, uh, the um, the Electronic Village website, which is linked in the uh, the Big TESOL uh, platform. Uh, if there are any questions, please. Um, Please let me know if you're trying to get a hold of a presenter and you can just let me know. I have access to all of our presenters. Thank you so much, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your conference.